Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So in the past, I've been asked quite often, in fact, um, to talk about axes. Now, obviously I focus a lot in, uh, in my channel on swords. And one of the reasons for that is because that's what I teach and use the most regularly. It's also the thing that's the most popular, that there's the greatest demand for, and indeed that we have the greatest number of sources, i.e. treatises and manuals, to study from. There are no real medieval treatises dealing with the use of short axes. There are treatises looking at the use of the pole axe or the, the long two-handed pole weapon essentially and indeed the halberd. Um, but whilst single-handed axes of this type are sort of tangentially referred to or shown occasionally in, um, in some technical sources, we don't really have any clear descriptive um, sources for their use certainly from the medieval and renaissance period we have perhaps some inkling of how um, tomahawks and boarding axes as they were called used in the navy um, were used a little bit perhaps maybe but again we don't have any manuals as such for them um, but certainly for the medieval period so if we're looking for example at the uh, the sort of viking era the so-called viking era the, the um, early medieval period um, we know that axes were used quite extensively, both in Scandinavia, of course, by the so-called Vikings, by the Danes and the, and, and the Norse. But additionally, they were, we know they were used for fighting in, um, in England, um, and so, uh, most famously by the house guards, the two-handed axe, but the one-handed axe was certainly used as well in Anglo-Saxon England. And they were very prominently used by the Longobards, that is the Germanic people that settled in the north of Italy. Um, and uh, they in fact had a type of axe, a very characteristic type of axe, which had a sort of similar to this, but with a hammer at the back end. If you just Google image search Longobard axe, you'll probably find lots of examples and they're sometimes found in graves. So axes were certainly popular weapons, especially in a period when swords were expensive. As the Middle Ages progressed, swords became, relatively speaking, cheaper. Uh, and certainly by about, you're probably talking about by the 12th, 13th century, pretty much any common soldier would have had a sword as their sidearm, as their backup weapon, um, their primary weapons usually being bows or spears. Um, and so swords were prevalent enough and common enough by that point that axes seem to have faded a little bit into the background. That's not to say they disappeared. If we look at the, uh, and I know you'll crucify me for my um, pronunciation again, but the Makiowski uh, Bible, um, which is from the 13th century from about 1250, uh, and that actually shows lots of axes of all different sizes and shapes being used. And one of the reasons that the axe came back uh, and became popular is because it's super effective against certain types of armor. Now, maybe not necessarily in the way you think. You look at an ax and immediately you think, you think it's a cleaving weapon because most people's fam familiarity with axes is either from chopping wood, uh, from splitting logs or chopping trees, or, or as a, you know, a garden tool essentially, or indeed it's from movies where the ax is portrayed um, as, as a sort of a great big cleaving, uh, cleaving weapon. And that's not to say that, yes, of course it is a cleaving weapon, it does have an edge, but importantly, it's very different to a sword and it has one distinct advantage over a sword in impact and it, it doubles up. It's sort of somewhere between being a sword and a mace or indeed it's somewhat similar to a warhammer. A warhammer works by having a piercing head heavy at the end of a shaft. This works in a very similar way but instead by having a cleaving head at the end of a shaft but having the weight concentrated at the end and of course they do function in slightly different ways because a, a war hammer has a point that will penetrate with the point and this has an edge, but they're both about concentrating the force into a small surface area. With the added advantage that this has over the Warhammer, arguably, that this is more effective against lightly armoured opponents as well, because while a war, Warhammer is very effective at putting a hole in armour, um, it doesn't actually cause, uh, obviously it can kill a person with one blow if it's well placed, but generally speaking, a, a blow from an axe will probably cause a more fatal blow to most parts of an unarmored person's body compared to a warhammer. So you could argue that the axe is more versatile against armored and unarmored opponents. Um, 
and, and it, it is effective especially against things like mail armor and, um, and gambesons. Against plate becomes less effective and that's probably why um, as we get into the later 14th century when plate harness becomes very common and into the 15th century we sort of it seems to be from the period artwork and indeed from the archaeology and surviving examples that axes started to become less common again uh, and we start to see the increase of maces and warhammers in that period which are better suited to dealing with plate armour. But it seems in the age of mail and gambesons that the axe was very, very popular. Now, one thing to say about it um, that often comes up is people want me to directly compare an axe with a sword. Um, and the point that I hope I've made clear in past videos is that really, if you're just comparing the one weapon with the one weapon, the sword has a very distinctly massive advantage in my opinion. And that being that it's lighter, it's edged all the way along its length. It's generally speaking longer. You can make an axe as long as a sword. That's completely true. However, if you're using it as a one-handed weapon, it's very much more unwieldy. It's not as well balanced as a sword. So really, if you're not using any accompanying weapon and you're dealing with an unarmored situation, so civilian self-defense, for example, and you're only carrying one of these objects, I would pretty much always put my money on the person with the sword um, because the sword is quicker, you know, it's more nimble, you can change direction more quickly, it's edged all the way along, you can't grab it or grapple with it as easily as you can against a, a, a shafted weapon because obviously you can grab any part of the shaft of an axe or a mace. Um, and, um, and it's longer, you can use the, the point, uh, it's got some form of handguard on it. So really, to say that the axe used alone is not a great weapon when you compare it to other hand weapons that are available. Um, it's, it's tip heavy, so it's relatively slow moving. It's relatively slow, therefore, same, same point really, but to change direction. So with a sword, when you can you know, faint, so pretend to attack one place, then quickly change the line of attack to somewhere else. More difficult to do that with tip heavy weapons. Also, of course, you've got a less um, you've got a shorter edge, so you have less of your weapon you can actually offend with. Um, yes, of course, if you hit someone with a flat or indeed with a hammer side, if, if it's in their head or a bone, you're still going to do a huge amount of damage, hopefully, um, unless maybe you hit, you know, Gamberson. But if we're talking about unarmored here, um, then it will still do damage, but not as much as with the edge. Um, but you don't have any hand protection, it's relatively short. So it is really as a weapon used alone not very advantageous against the sword and really it seems it's one main advantage is that it's cheap uh, an axe is much easier to make much cheaper and quicker to make than a sword is a sword is more technologically complicated and uh, in terms of the materials used is far more demanding on a society to be able to produce swords than it is to produce axes. Axes are on a par with spears, you know, a relatively small amount of iron. It doesn't need to be great quality. Yes, preferably you have an iron body with a steel edge, but if you don't, it's still going to work as an axe. A sword has to be fairly good quality steel, otherwise it just won't stay together in one piece. It will bend or break or just fall apart. Um, so, not a great weapon by itself. However, and this is the point I'm really working around to, as soon as you bring in a shield, the game changes slightly. At this point, this weapon's not very good defensively by itself, okay? But as soon as you bring a shield in, it changes things hugely because now we've got a really good defensive object, the shield, and we've got a really good offensive object that's good against unarmoured and armoured opponents. And the reach isn't so much of an issue once you bring a shield into the mix. Reach is more of an issue, first of all, in unarmoured fighting. As soon as you've got armour involved, reach and being able to hit someone with the tip of your weapon at long range isn't so important because someone with armour can close in more safely, knowing that their armour will protect them. But that's a similar situation to with a shield. Once you've got a shield, equally, you can come to close range more frequently, more safely, more easily. So once you can do that, actually striking power becomes very important because, of course, if someone with a long weapon casts their sword out and you can cover that line as you close in, 
bam, one hit from the axe, fight over. Um, so actually being able to dish out really serious, immediately incapacitating wounds from a weapon like an axe, once it's paired with a shield, becomes really valuable. So, I wouldn't say that the axe is necessarily better than a sword, um, once you're using a shield. However, it, it greatly reduces the disparity between those two weapons. I think if you've only got one weapon in your hand, and that is a sword or an axe, the sword has a huge advantage. Once you bring shields into the mix, the difference, uh, certainly the, the difference in sort of good or bad, or strong or weak, between axe and sword completely changes. And there's one other very important element that changes that strong and weak relationship and that is that the axe can also hook and that's a very important thing because when you're fighting with shields one of the biggest problems is you've got to get around the shield and with a sword there's only a certain number of lines that you can get around the shield with cuts and thrusts yes you can hook with the pommel there are ways you can close in uh, you can potentially hook the other person's shield with your own shield but having a hook and essentially a catching device at the end of your weapon that you have with an axe and you're able to hook it over the opponent's shield, open up that line and then either cut into it or indeed thrust into it if you have any kind of point or even just into their face if they don't have a protective helmet um, with a visor on it, um, gives you lots of other options. Um, and you can manipulate the shield with that hook in lots of different ways. It's not only a question of opening it up here or opening it up there or opening it up there, but you can also hook and twist so you can manipulate the person's body with that hook, with that lead you've got. Um, so I do think that as soon as shields come into the mix, the differences between the differences between axe and sword change. It changes the dynamic of the fight a lot. And the way that you use these weapons actually changes a lot because you've got that shield involved. Um, and I really think that the axe comes more into its own when used with a shield and using it by itself against someone with a sword is uh, foolhardy or brave, depending how you look at it. <laughs> Last thing I would say is that if you are using the axe by itself, if you have to, if it's the only thing to hand, if it's the only weapon you've got, or you were attacked by someone with a sword and literally the axe was there and you grabbed it, you don't have time to grab a shield or anything else. If you've only got the axe, a lot of the defensive movements that you do with it will be very different or should be very different. And this is conjecture. I'll just remind you again, as I said at the beginning of the video, we don't know, there are no technical treatises for the use of these weapons. However, we can extrapolate from other things we know. Uh, for example, if we look at uh, Fiore de Liberi's use of the bastoncello, which is a small stick, um, and he uses it in a similar way to how he uses his dagger, and many of the defensive moves, rather than thinking about swords, when we might be striking into an incoming blow or parrying or whatever, dum, like that, many of the defensive movements are actually done with both hands on the weapon. And I do think that because of the tip-heavy nature of axes and maces and warhammers and things like this, if you had to use this defensively against a sword attack, your best option might be, quite simply, to, as that attack comes in, close the line using it as a small staff, essentially. Close the line, dum, and then move into grapple and strike. These kind of things. Um, if you're dealing with someone who's thrusting a spear or a sword at you, thrusts from spear or sword can reload and come again very, very quickly, or they can come in from different angles. And I think in that situation, if you've got a tip-heavy weapon, like an axe or a mace or a warhammer, you don't want to be waving the tip around because the tip is very, very slow. You're never going to be able to defend um, repeatedly from thrusts in that way. Instead, using the weapon as a small parrying stick is by far the most sensible way to use it, in my opinion. Um, so if someone comes at you, attacks you with a, with a spear, and the only thing you have an axe, immediately switch into centrally half-sorting. Um, and what you really want to be doing is closing the distance, but this now becomes a really quick defensive parrying device. But when you want to, once you've done your parry, and maybe done a grab or whatever you do after that, or just close distance, you can now unleash that head and you've got a huge amount of 
impact potential from that head. So, to conclude, I think axes are very, very versatile weapons. It's a great shame that we don't have sources for their use. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, generally speaking, the sword has an advantage um, over the axe, unless shields are involved. If shields are involved, I think the axe and the sword are more or less equal. They, have, they each have advantages and disadvantages, different strengths and weaknesses. If you are forced to use an axe alone against any other weapon, I think, assuming it's not a big two-handed axe, assuming it's a short one, your best bet a lot of the time is going to be using the weapon two-handed as a defensive item to close the distance to be able to then get your big coup de grace in. Because it's a sl relatively slow weapon used in one hand, but very powerful. So keep that power and that striking force harnessed until you can close in enough to bam, to get your axe through the person. So there's some ideas. You might greatly disagree with some things I've said. Of course, feel free to comment in the comments below. But there's some of my thoughts on this subject. Cheers, folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Follow us on Facebook. You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt. Support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.